Well hi guys, Emma again. Welcome back to the shop. This is part number two of this little dynamo build, Prince. Some steel come today. This is from Interloy in Brisbane. And it's alloy. It's M, I think the designation there, it designation is M1020, which is about... Uh, four or five percent carbon and steel it's reasonably easy to work I hope and this is the smaller size that was available is 100 by 25 and they've cut me a piece about 80 mil long so ideally we can nearly get two magnets out of this not quite but probably we could get the armature in the and the magnet out of this piece of stuff I don't have any uh, any way of cutting that so that's not going to happen what I'm probably going to do with this is just dress the sides up square in the fore jaw down to size so down to 60 millimeters this way and 80 millimeters this way and to clean and then mark the centers for the basically for the armature which is going to be this piece of stuff and for the cut out in the top and change all that and file the top round and then set him up in the fore drawer and draw, bore the two holes and cut the bottom out and that should be starting to look something like it, it's supposed to so that's the idea with that. This is to be, this piece of stuff here is 2 inch 1020. I'm still a bit open minded about how to make an armature. One idea probably is to mill a slot in the end here before we part it off and drill it crossways and machine a bit of this down to 15mm diameter to go between part it off and push it all together that sounds like it sounds deceptively simple I'm not sure that's going to work um, we could just mill it up and that's probably not a bad idea either this is a piece of aluminium which is 50mm and that's to make the end caps rather than brass because this machine's starting to get a bit heavy when you start to mess around with it I'm realizing that it's not going to be a lightweight so aluminium might be the best and easiest and quickest way and certainly aluminium was like that piece posted or shipped was like $28 the 250 mil wide 250 mil long so that's cheaper than brass which was going to be about 120 or something for that piece so we don't need very much we only want about 50 mil off the bottom of it but that'll do the job for that so I guess the first real job on this is to get in and get this piece of square and machine it down a bit so that it's about the right size so I might get in and do that so I've got this set up in the fore jaw it's a fair old load for this little lathe but it seems to be handling it okay it's fairly well balanced there um, as I suspected that the saw cut from the dealership isn't quite perfect both sides have got a bit of taper in them that's cleaned up there now and ideally we want to take this down to about 60 millimeters or exactly 60 millimeters we have a look with what my American friends call a scale that's a just under 80 78 so if we took about 10 off this side and about eight off the other side that would give us four nice square reference places to start with so 
I'm going to cut most of this out because to be honest it's going to take me a couple of hours I reckon at least to get it somewhere near. I've just got a nice solid bit of half inch high speed steel in there with a decent big strong point on it and I reckon I'm going to have to sharpen it a couple of times and we'll take 10 mil off here and see what we end up with so that's what we're about next so let's get in and do it well I've been messing around at that for not as long as I expected and it's cutting a lot it's cutting a lot better than I thought it would um, we're down about 70 mil which is about halfway the smart thing would have been to order a piece of stuff that was more closer to size if I got a bit 63 mil long wouldn't have hurt but I didn't know how far off the hot saw would be or anything this time around and I have bought stuff in the past that's been undersized on one side so I've given that a clean up and just taken the burrs off it and rub with a file and I'm going to turn it around and take the other 10 mil off the other side and that'll be down to size that way then we can clean up both sides here and change drill around the top and spend some time with a hacksaw and a file anyway let's turn that around and this here against here is actually nice and neat and clean all the way around so it's a good good fit in there so everything must be cleaning up pretty square right, take a another cut off there and that's pretty close to clean that up so I might leave that for tonight it's getting a bit late work again tomorrow I might take this next size down when I get home from work in the morning tomorrow so so I've got this down to 60 mil, 60 mil parallel here nice and square the ends don't clean up square because basically the the bandsaw at the at the steel supply place is not cut and square so I've set that up nice and parallel to the jaws so that should be right I'm going to clean one end up next Have a look there that's pretty jolly sweet across there have a look at the other end that i haven't done and i'm not going to quite a gap under one side so it's a good start to the magnet Next job will be to mark this out, put the top radius on and mark the two holes. I'm going to leave a little bit on the bottom here to machine off afterwards and when I've got this hole bored I'm going to make a plug for that I think and set him up and machine the bottom off and that way we won't have to worry so much about it breaking through and squashing in and changing dimension and keeping it tight and all that sort of stuff so that's the way I'm going to do that time to mark him out now I've glued one side of this but I haven't got a height gauge and I haven't got a surface plate and yes those things would be nice I also haven't got space to put it and I haven't really got room on my list of spending money priorities for one either for the times that I would use it or the use I'd get out of it but I have got a drill press table which is I guess 90% and a height gauge and a decent steel rule what I've done is set this up using the 
the height adjustment there to 30 millimeters and just scribed a line each side each way up we need to do the same here at 30 millimeters which is the bottom circle and then they have to be and according to the drawings they want to be 25 millimeter apart so that's 50 mil if we adjust this up a bit and set him here at 50 nice and neat And that's our two hole centers. So if we center punch them and scribe a line around here, that'll give us our, our circle and our inner circle. And this one here is where the armature sits. So you don't need a lot of fancy marking out gear for most things. This is an excellent investment. You don't see one that's any good very often. This one's a beautiful tool. I bought it off a retired tool maker. It's a really nice thing to have. It's adjustable here. It's got decent long scribers on it. And it's a good thing to have. So let's centre punch them and scribe the lines on. Same goes, a nice sharp pair of dividers make the job a lot easier. So that's the holes marked on there. Next job is to mark one a little bit bigger for our chain drill holes. Don't try and guess them, it's just rough and you're going to have to take a lot off to clean it up and it's going to look a bit crap so you're going to leave about four mil I reckon for a quarter inch drill and mark that round the top so we're going to chain drill this not quite meeting up or you're going to end up with problems and they're not going to be straight or parallel or anything so leave a bit of a gap between them mark them out and put a, a series of holes through there sand punch them nice and neat and we'll drill them so that's the next job so I've chain drilled these and if you notice they follow the the line pretty close there, that one might be a fraction close but it'll clean up. Now that should give us a good guide to get everything nice and square and true when we're filing it this way. It probably could nearly fit another hole in here and it might be a bit pointless, it's just a bit more filing if we don't. So next job is to get a hacksaw or something and slice these open cut down there and out there and down there and out there maybe in the bit out in the middle and start to file them up that's going to be a bit of an undertaking it might take a couple of hours so I'm going to do that off camera Yeah, that's going to take a while guys. So I'm going to say this is the end of part two. As big thanks for watching and keep tuned, there'll be another one soon. 
then we'll finish this magnet off. So 